Okay, uh, so obviously we've been talking about KF and uh, complex ion. So when we do these problems, as I mentioned before, again, those KF values are pretty large. So we do make two assumptions. Again, the first assumption is basically we assume all the metal ion uh, gets used up. And that basically means, again, that we kind of already know uh, what our X is going to be in this case. Uh, so we can use a number here. And we do, as I mentioned before, you do want to make sure that you are probably using the molarity here of everybody so that you'll be at the end, sort of the right units, uh, and you'll end up with the right answer. The uh, sort of second assumption that we make is, even though almost all of the metal ion gets used up some of it will come back the other way and basically come back towards our reactant side and the amount that does the concentration of the metal ion when it's all said and done uh, should be a really small number so if you're doing one of these problems you end up calculating for the metal ion a a fairly large number at equilibrium, you definitely went wrong somewhere uh, in terms of your calculation. All right, so I tried one once, you try one here. We're not going to keep the volumes constant or anything like that, so you do need to take that into account. You also have a stepwise sort of uh, dissociation happening there. Uh, so basically, in this case, uh, we want everything, it looks like. So we want the concentration of silver at equilibrium, uh, these two guys as well. And again, we're mixing our silver nitrate with a little sodium thiosulfate. All right, so see what you come up with. And okay, so let's take a look, see how you're doing. So in this particular case, we're looking for really the concentration of everybody here. Uh, we are given really the stepwise sort of formation of this complex ion. So if you wanted to, you could definitely uh, take both of those steps and you could add them together. And obviously here, uh, this guy and this guy would cancel. And that would give you really the overall reaction that's happening, which is basically our silver, which is gonna be our metal there. Uh, it's gonna react with a couple of these ligands here. And it will form this complex ion. And obviously, we could have a KF for this, which would basically be, in this case, our K1 times our K2. Again, when we add those together, we got to multiply the K values. Uh, 7.4 to the 8 times 3.9 to the 4th here. And that would get us something in the ballpark of like 2.9 times 10 to the 13. Now, we can set up an ice table like we did before. We really want to know uh, sort of the concentration of both the silver and the ligand when they're all mixed together. So obviously here, our silver nitrate is going to be our source of, although enter light nitrate, is going to be our source of silver in this case. And we do need to do, again, like a dilution type equation here because... Uh, we're mixing, so we'll do an M1V1 equals M2V2. That means the silver concentration, when they're all mixed, would be uh, 150 milliliters times the concentration of our silver nitrate. Again, basically divided by our V2, which is our total volume. So that is 150 and 200 uh, should give us 350 milliliters in this case, right? So that was cancel. And that'll give us, in terms of the silver concentration, when everybody's mixed together, yeah, go with a 0 0.000429. We could do the same thing here for our S2032 minus, which this guy is a source of. And in this case, we used uh, 200 milliliters of it. And it had a concentration of 5 molar and divided again by the total volume here. Going to get us uh, 200 times 5 divided by a 350. And I'll call it 2.86 molar. Any questions on that? All right. So I'm personally uh, going to roll with the overall uh, reaction here to start with. 
and uh, use my concentrations of what everything should be here in the overall. So uh, let me just recopy this over here. We got our silver plus a couple of these guys here. Going to our AGS2032, three minus. So initially what we calculated there on the previous page was we had uh, 0 0.000429 molar of this guy. Uh, we had 2.86 and 0. Once again here, we can do our assumption because this is a complex ion. So we should expect, again, the silver, the metal ion here, to be completely used up. So this is going to be minus 0 0.000429. Uh, this will be minus. We still need to do the 2. So 2 times our change. And plus our change over here. That means when we reach equilibrium, we'll have no silver. Uh, for the S203, we'll have 2.86 minus 2 times 0 0.000429, basically still 2.86, basically, and uh, 0 0.00049, and these are molarity at this point. First off, any questions on the table? As a result of the very first ice table that we just did here with the overall reaction, we actually got two answers we're looking for, I think. Uh, we have the concentration of our ligand there, 2.86, and the concentration of our complex ion being that. So uh, we basically just found uh, this guy, and we also found our ligand's concentration as well. All right, so at this point, you actually do have a couple of options uh, in terms of what you might want to do. So we already know that this guy here is uh, 0 0.00049 molar. Now, we really want to know uh, a couple of things. Everybody else's concentration. So you could go after silver first if you wanted to. Or because we have the individual stepwise equilibriums, you could just go with what you got, which means I just calculated from this first table, this guy's concentration and this guy's concentration, which means I could actually use the second equilibrium here and actually get that guy's concentration, which is what we're looking for. So I'm going to do it that way here. So I could go into my K2, uh, which again is this guy right here. And that will equal my concentration of AG S20323 minus divided by my AG S203 minus and my S2032 minus. And this will equal again, not our combined K because we're not looking at that equation anymore. We're looking at this one. So we'll equal this K value here of 3.9 times 10 to the fourth. And that's also why we are not squaring this one because we're not using the overall reaction. We're using, once again, this guy right here where it's only one of those in there. So we have all that information. We'll pop it in there. We got uh, 0 0.00049 divided by this guy's concentration, which is what we're looking for in this calculation, uh, times our 2.86, and that will equal 3.9 times 10 to the minus 4. We're basically just going to switch places with these two guys. We're going to multiply the concentration to the other side and divide by the K value, and that will get us 0 0.00049 divided by 3.9 to the minus, actually it's positive 4. So you used to put in minuses, positive four, uh, to the positive four. And uh, we're going to divide it by 2.86 in this case. And that will get us here a value of, for this particular guy, of about 
four times 10 to the minus nine molar. If you don't have a scientific notation, you got a bunch of zeros and a four at the end of your calculator, most likely like eight zeros and a four just at the end if you don't have a scientific notation. Any questions on that one there? So that gives us the second thing that we're looking for. Now, what I could do at this point is because I just calculated that, oops, because I just calculated that, I could look at actually the first equilibrium guy. And now I have this concentration. And I still have this concentration. And that means that I could get to my silver by using the first equilibrium. And if I do that there, uh, we will end up uh, with basically the equilibrium again expression for our first guy. And uh, so we'll come here and we'll go for our K1 is the concentration of AgS2O3 minus divided by silver and our S2O3 2 minus, which equals 7.4 times 10 to the 8. And let's see here. This is missing a two, right? Man or day today for numbers, I think. There we go. I think that's missing a two. So that means that guy's missing a two. There. Let me just recalculate real quick. I felt like it was slightly off. Let me just make sure here. Two to the fourth, divided by 2.86. Yeah, so not too big of a difference, but this will be... Uh, 3.8. So this guy actually should be uh, more on the lines of 3.8. Sorry about that. Lost me a two along the way there. Not so good. All right. So let's try it again without losing numbers here for the last one, hopefully. All right. So uh, putting in our correct numbers here, uh, we will go with uh, 3.8 times 10 to the minus nine divided by our silver concentration and our 2.86, which is our ligand concentration. And this will equal our K1, which is 7.4 times 10 to the eight. Once again, these two guys are gonna switch places and that will give me 3.8 to the minus nine divided by 7.4 uh, to the 8 divided by 2.86. That looks a little better, I think. That's going to give me a silver concentration of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 18 molar. That is, again, a very small value for the free silver ion, which is what we would expect to happen in this particular case. First off, any questions on that there? Now, what I did is I obviously use each of the stepwise equilibrium reactions, which you could absolutely do. Now, if you wanted to, as I mentioned before, you could have actually uh, went right after the silver concentration first if you wanted to by using the overall KF value that we got on the first page there. So, for example, if we... Uh, uh, slap it right in there, I think. So let's just say at the end of this first ice table, you decided you wanted to use the KF value that we had uh, calculated on the previous page. And in this case here, that would be uh, 2.9 to the 13. So the KF for this reaction, 2.9 times 10 to the 13. So we could have definitely did like we did before. We could have called this guy X and came back and did the silver first using the KF, which would have been in this case, our product divided by our silver, divided by our ligand. Now, because we are using the overall equation here, we do need to square it because coefficient there in the overall equation is a two, right? So we do need to make sure we square it. That would equal our 2.9 times 10 and 13. 
putting in our numbers from our first table will give us our 0 0.000429, uh, our silver concentration, and our 2.86 that does need to get squared equals 2.9 times 10 to 13. Once again, we're just going to basically swap these guys out in terms of relocation. We'll take 0 0.000429 divided by 2.86 squared and divided by uh, 2.9 to the 13 gets us our silver concentration of exactly what we got there when we did it went to the individual one. So we end up with 1.8 times 10 to minus 18. So if you wanted to go as, after silver first, you could have. And once you got silver, you could have went into the first one because you would have both of these to get to this guy as well. So you could have went in that direction if you want to go that path first. It all works out the same because every one of those equations are all equilibrium equations. So as long as you put the equilibrium concentrations in there, you can use any one that you want in any order. Any question on that particular one there? All right. One last example here to look at, which is sort of a combination of what we've been talking about, which is uh, KSP and KF merging together here together. And we want to calculate the molar solubility, which is basically the molarity of silver chloride if you added it to one molar ammonia. So we have our two sort of equilibriums that's happening here. We have our silver chloride equilibrium, our KSP. And we also have our silver ion with our ammonia forming this complex ion. We can add these together and get an overall reaction that's happening. And actually the silver ion here actually gets canceled out in this case. And this leaves us basically silver chloride plus some ammonia is going to give us this complex ion and some chloride ion floating around. We could obviously get a K value for this by doing the same thing here. Can I take my KSP and multiply it by my KF? The answer is yes, because they're all just equilibrium constants. It's no different than when you take your KA times your KB to get your KW. So it doesn't matter what the little subscript is. You can multiply them together to get the overall K here in this particular reaction. And if you do that, you will get 1.6 to the minus 10 times 1.5 to the seven. Gonna get you a uh, 2.4 times 10 to the minus three in this particular case. Now, in this case, we're actually looking for the molar solubility, which means we're gonna actually approach this problem more like a KSP type of problem. And we can even see we have actually a relatively small value for our overall K when we put it together. So if we take this overall reaction here and again, put it together like we just did, giving us our silver chloride plus our couple of ammonias, complex ion, and some chloride. Again, giving us a K here of 2.4 times 10 to the minus three. So I'm gonna do a ice table like we would do for a KSP problem. I'm gonna go with my initial concentration of ammonia because I do have an initial concentration. It is one molar in the problem, I believe. Yep. I have uh, none of this and none of this. The change here is going to be minus 2S. and a little bit different because we don't usually have anything on the left-hand side in KSP, but in this case we do because we're comboing a couple of things together, plus S and plus S. This means at equilibrium, we will have one minus two S, S and S. Any questions on the table? So very similar to a KSP table, the exception is we comboed a couple of steps there, so we will have something there on the left-hand side. This is going to go into our K expression, which is our products divided by reactants. 
And once again, we want to remember to also, we need to square it. And that will equal our 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3. So putting in our values, that's going to give us uh, basically s squared divided by 1 minus 2s squared is equal to 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3. In this case, hopefully you can see there is a big square root that you could do on both sides. And that will give me s over 1 minus 2s equals, not forgetting the actual square root the other side, 2.4 to the minus 3. That's been square rooted. 4.899 times 10 to the minus 2. We're going to multiply this to the other side. Gives us s is equal to 4. Point, I'm going to round 9 times 10 to the minus 2 minus uh, two times that answer will give us uh, 9.8 times 10 to the minus 2s. We're going to bring the s's to the same side, so we're going to add that to the other side. That will give me 1 plus that basically gets me 1.098s equals 4.9 times 10 to the minus 2. Divide that back to the other side. There we go. Gets us a molar solubility of 4.5 times 10 to the minus 2 molar in this particular case. And that is the molar solubility of silver chloride in ammonia. If I wanted grams per liter just to have a reference point, I would take that and multiply it by uh, the molar mass of silver chloride, which is 107.9 plus 35.45. And uh, that would get me here about 143.4 grams per mole. So we take that, times it there by our number. And we'll get something, I think, like six point. Four o grams per liter would be the solubility there of silver chloride in ammonia. First off, any questions on that calculation? Now, you may remember we actually did silver chloride as one of the first KSP problems that we uh, did in this chapter. And basically the molar solubility of KSP in water was something in the ballpark, silver chloride in water. It's in the ballpark of here, about 1.3 times 10 to the minus five molar, or roughly, if you remember, about 0 0.002 grams per liter. Which one is it more soluble in, in this case? It is definitely more soluble, way more soluble in the complex ion, right, with the ammonia. And that goes to show you that that is why KF values are so large. Whenever you have a really good ligand next to a metal, it's going to want to form that complex ion. It's going to basically gobble up. You might be familiar with silver chloride. It is a white solid, right, like we saw in that picture. If you have silver chloride and you toss some ammonia in a solution, it is strong enough to take it out of the solid state and it will take it back into this complex ion and it will dissolve the solid because the silver will now be in the complex ion. It will actually be in this guy floating around in the solution. And that's how much it wants to form a complex ion when that ligand is present. Even though it's already in a solid, if you add some ammonia, it'll go I'm, I'm good with the solid. I'm just going to go out and get rid of the chloride and actually go combine with the ammonia and it will actually dissolve the solid. That's actually one of the tests that you do to show that you do have silver ions when you do those qualitative analysis tests is you add ammonia to your silver chloride, the, the precipitate disappears, then you actually add acid back and that gets rid of the ammonia and then that allows the silver and the chloride to come back together and it reappears. 
So the formation of a complex ion is always favored because of the very large K values. And when that situation occurs, it's going to want to do the complex ion versus most other things. Any questions on KF, complex ions, or anything like that? All right, that is chapter 15.